Carolina now, where the state's election board says 97 percent of votes will be counted by election night. North Carolina's Attorney General Josh Stein joins me. Good morning, Mr. Attorney General. Thanks very much uh, for being here. And I should note you're on hey, the Parker. ballot. You're, you're up for re-election as well. I am. I am as well. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get to what happened in Graham, North Carolina, uh, over the weekend in mm -hmm. just a minute. It's very important. But just the fact that you're going to know a lot by the end of election night in your state, how important is that, given the divisiveness, given the environment, particularly around this election? Well, it depends on how close the elections are, even among those 97 percent. Uh, mm -hmm. If we remember in 2016, our governor's race was within a tenth of a percentage point on election night. And we waited. We counted all the provisional ballots, uh, the mail-in ballots that came in after Election Day. And after about 10, 12 days, we finalized the count. Governor Cooper won the election. And, and that's how democracy works. So sometimes, if the race is a point or two points uh, on election night, we know who wins because those extra ballots are not going to be enough to tip the balance. But if it is exceptionally close on election night, mm -hmm. we exhibit patience. We have experience doing that in North Carolina, and all Americans need to know we may know who the winner is on election night, but we may not, and we just need to be patient and let all the votes count. As my mother told me as a little girl, patience is a virtue. I think we're all going to need <laughs> a lot of that come tomorrow night. Let's talk about what happened in Graham, North Carolina. For people who didn't see it over the weekend, here's video of the protests on Saturday and confrontation with police. This was notably the last day of early voting in the state, and police officers used pepper spray to try to break up this march to a polling place. Here's how they defended this after saying that a police officer was assaulted. Listen. At that point, that's when we deemed that it was an un unsafe event and deemed that it was unlawful, and we went ahead and dispersed the crowd. Um, the disbursement measures we used was using a pepper fogger that was never directed at any person. That's what he says, but look at this video. Our viewers should watch this. This is video of at least one man right there being sprayed in the face. The organizer of the protest, the Reverend Drumright, here's what he said. There are people that did not vote today because the police released tear gas and pepper spray his point is, he says, Mr. Attorney General, this stopped some people from voting. The North Carolina Board of Elections says they don't have any evidence that it did stop people from voting. What, what do you know? Did this stop some people from voting Saturday? Well, I will say that obviously what happened in Graham was deeply troubling. I mean, the images, I've, I've talked to many of the people who have been involved, frankly, both from the organizer perspective and, and from law enforcement. The key is, in North Carolina, it is against the law to obstruct, harass, or intimidate any voter. And so if anybody was denied their right to vote, they need to let the State Board of Elections know that, and we will get to the bottom of what happened in Graham. What I really want the voters of North Carolina to know going into Tuesday, where we expect another three, four, five hundred thousand North Carolinians to vote, if you go to the polls and someone gets in your way, harasses you, intimidates mm -hmm. you, tries to obstruct your participation, immediately let the local precinct official know so that that person okay. can be held legally accountable. Listen to this from vice presidential candidate Senator Kamala Harris in Goldsboro, North Carolina, just yesterday. Here in North Carolina, you know more than most that there have been active people trying to suppress the vote. I don't have to tell you what the Court of Appeal here in North Carolina said, which is that that one law was written with, quote, surgical precision to make it difficult to vote. There is an ongoing fight over voter ID. It's been going on for years in your state. I, I just wonder if we mm -hmm. could end on this. Your message to anyone watching who may be confused about the North Carolina Court of Appeals decision in September and what they need or do not need to cast their vote tomorrow. Yeah, one does not need a voter ID in order to cast their vote. You don't need a, a photo ID, excuse me. Here's the thing. There's so much noise, so much confusion, so much intense, intentional misinformation to try to deprive you of your power, to take your power away from you. The voters of North Carolina, the voters of America, 
You have the power. You will determine who our next president is. No politician will make that decision. It's going to be the people's decision. Attorney General uh, Josh Stein, thank you for your time this morning. I know it's an incredibly busy few weeks for you. Mm. We appreciate it. Thank you, Poppy.